everyone, very warm welcome back to MechTech and we are back out on the drive today and I have to introduce you to this which I've nicknamed the Invincible Fiesta this is actually um, my sister-in-law's car she's had this, it's her first car, she's had it since 2011 so she's had it a fair while and it has got more lives than Sylvester Garfield and any other cat you can think of put together <laughs> probably mainly due to me not letting it die but anyway it's been crashed and had a, three times I think and had a new engine which I put in and umpteen million repairs of rust and all the rest of it um, but the time has come where she needed a bigger car and um, Harvey as she calls it has been sort of um, sort of hovering where he's been used and not used used and not used and it's been a great standby car um, but I think um, she doesn't need it anymore now so I've got a few repairs to do on it before we can get it sold now obviously it's not going to be worth fortunes because it's done 150 odd thousand miles it's on its second engine uh, and it's generally a bit sort of um, used should we say that's a nice way of putting it <laughs> it's been used very well loved and used um, the biggest issue we've got at the moment which I need to sort out first of all is the driver's door handle is packed up um, it's just snapped basically inside it's just plastic and it gets brittle over the, over the years and, and snaps so we've got a new one in the garage to put on so that is going to be the first repair I'm going to do on it so I can actually get into the driver's side without having to climb over <laughs> so I'll get you set up with the door open and show you what we've got to take off and go from there let's get some work done Radio, with the door open on these Mark IV Fiestas it's pretty simple to get the door card off you've got one screw there one screw there and one screw there and you can take this cover off as well you've got a screw in there too if you want to because that makes it easier for the door card to lift off now this has been off umpteen billion times which is why it's probably not got the right screws in it and it's not got any of the caps that go over the screws in it but we won't worry about that because it is what it is at the end of the day this car has also been nicknamed donkey <laughs> mainly because it doesn't ever give up no matter what <laughs> He's thrown at it, even when, the reason it had a new engine by the way, is because the cam belt tensioner gave up and it skipped a tooth. Um, so rather than faff around trying to repair that engine, we've got a, a good second hand engine which had done low mileage for not a lot of money. I just dropped the whole thing over. That's the tweeter I've just unplugged there, just so you know. Um, I'll take this cover off up here just to make life a little bit easier one screw in there this uh, little cover thing pops off actually that's already knackered anyway <laughs> right we'll just leave that there because we can get that off with that like that and then all you've got around the edge is um, door clips which you just pop off and hopefully I did replace a few of these last time I had this car here so hopefully it should come off alright why is that not coming off Go. Oh, bit. There it goes. Oh, one of them's fallen off the back of the door card. That's right, we can repair that. I think I glued that one on again last time as well. And we've got to pop the switch out, which is just two plugs. Easy if you get your uh, screwdriver in there and just push the little pin down, and it just pops off like that. Through there, and then she door card off. Easy enough. Definitely have to repair that door card again. It's gone a bit manky. Right, obviously this has all been off before as well. And door handle lurks up in here. Now there's a metal. You can see that in there. There's a metal cover in there, which is what um, protects the lock from being got at. So I'm going to get that off. Um, can't exactly remember how it comes off. I think it's just two screws in the end of the door one in the bottom one in the side we'll get that off and that will reveal the handle right, I need to go and get a bigger screwdriver I'll come back to you in a minute right now you've got one screw here obviously this has all been up before so it comes off really easily and one screw down here and that should release that cover from the inside which also doubles up as the window runner like that just to reach in there Pull that out like that. There go. Easy as that. Now we can get to the door handle. Which 
is in there and as you can see there that bit should be connected to the door handle and it's snapped so that is what I thought it was so that's good at least it's that so this door handle is literally held in with two little screws which are just self tappers get a bigger screwdriver again. I'll come back to you in a second. Right, let's get this off. Always get the right tools, otherwise you end up burning things. There you go. See the handle just fell out on the floor. Can you see that in the camera? It's down here. It's easy enough to, so it's just snapped off the back there, off that lever. So when you pull the handle, obviously it should pull the lever, but it's snapped off there. So that's why it's not working. So we've got another one to replace that with. So I'll grab now. There's a new one, and it's got the little tang on the back of it. And while we're in here, obviously, I'm going to lubricate everything up as well to make sure that it doesn't put too much pressure on it to do it again. Let's move you around a bit because I need to get where you are. Go right, you can see the rod in here. Hopefully, that's the rod. We'll put that through there. And um, you probably have to pop the rod off the other end actually, so you can lock it on. It's one of those funny little clips on the other end. So we'll get the screw handle screwed in first, then we can put that on. open to get, a, get it off because usually this rod would stay connected to the handle you see morning you all right so, now we screwed the handle in <laughs> not sure I can get that in there the way it's supposed to go or not Simple as that. <laughs> I'm gonna get some WD-40 in there now, give it a bit of lubrication up, make sure it's all free. It looks pretty free, but I just want to make sure because I don't want to put too much pressure on that new handle. And then we'll just put it all back together. And that is that job done. Nice easy fix, lovely jubbly. Right, 
the next job on this little fiesta is to address these front seats now as you can see they've had a lot of use and a lot of wear and are fairly dirty so we are going to take them out and we're going to try something i've seen umpteen times on youtube by other people i've never done myself and we're going to spray them all down with some g101 cleaner which is made by auto smart i've got some of that now and we're actually going to jet wash them um, and see what they come up like obviously outside the car so i'm going to whip these out there's a bolt on each corner not too hard to get out and then we can get them in the garden and hopefully give them a good clean and as it's a nice sunny day out as you can see um, we'll get them all dried hopefully in, in the nice weather let's get these out and i'll come back to you Well, yeah, I've got the seats in the back garden now and also I have removed the seatbelt buckles you would have seen me unplugging these in the car and I didn't want to get everything water in these so I've actually unplugged or unbolted the whole thing taking the wiring off so they are safe um, this is the stuff I'm going to be using on it G101 multi-purpose cleaner you dilute it down in one of these spray bottles so I'm going to give this give these good soaking in that maybe give them a scrub with a brush and then we'll give them a blast with a jet wash and see how we get on. Let's carry on. I had to stop the time lapse there and show you. I don't know if you can see, I've done obviously turned the top half of this back at the moment. Look at the colour difference between the blue from there to there. It's unbelievably different. And obviously the pattern is coming out a bit better on there. That obviously come out better when it's dry as well. But that is really working well. I'm hoping you can see that on camera. If you look at this, it's like a grey colour down here and blue up here. So I'm going to carry on and I'll maybe come back in with another comparison in a minute. Let's carry on. Just thought I'd show you the difference between side to side on this seat base. You can see the line up the middle of it and the difference between the done side and the dirty side. It's an amazing difference. Really, really pleased with that. I'm gonna to have to work this corner a little bit more because this corner's not coming off. I'll put some more cleaner on that actually while we're here. Let that soak in for a minute. I might go over these again with another lot of cleaner now. I've just washed them obviously because now the um, material is wet. It will absorb the cleaner better. But yeah, well chuffed with that. So carry on, and uh, you can see the difference between the two seats there. How blue, I mean, that's wet, but how blue that is in comparison to that one. So really, really good. Let's carry on.
Here we go, I've set those down in the bottom of the garden in the sun to obviously dry off, they look a hell of a lot better. They're not perfect, bear in mind they are, what year's the car, 98? 24 year old seats, they've done 150,000 miles, so they look pretty well to be fair. Got the headrests over there as well. Yeah, pretty pleased with the way they've come out, a hell of a lot better than they were, so just got to let them dry now and then we can uh, obviously put them back in again. Top banana. Right, now the front seats obviously you've seen me doing, the back seats are fine in this car. I actually took the covers off this probably a couple of years ago now and put them in the washing machine and they come out really nice. They weren't that bad to be fair but they're still looking pretty good. Apart from I noticed here, there is a little white patch. And further investigation it appears someone has built some paint or something down the back here. So I'm going to whip this seat out, it's just those four bolts you can see there, Torx headed bolts and we'll see if we can get all that off the back of the seat and obviously it's all gone down the back in the gap there as well so I'll show you when I'll get this off um, and see if we can get, get rid of it all Right, I haven't taken that section of the seat out you can see it's all in that bottom groove there so I'm going to have to try and get all that out and also it's dripped right down and it's gone right underneath the seat so I'm going to have to just take the base out which is fairly easy on these you've just got three screws at the front here one in the middle, one each side and the base comes out so I'm gonna pop that out and hopefully we'll get to the extent of the uh, where the paint's gone and get it all out it's only emulsion I think so it should be fairly easy to get off I'll come back to you in a sec well that's pretty gross isn't it <laughs> there's quite a bit of uh, paint and all sorts under here the plus side I've found a pound so that's always uh, nice oh another 21p put that in the pocket for later drinks money I think I'm gonna have to get the hoover out here hoover that first and then I'll have a go at cleaning all that paint off it. Only, this, only in this area, and it's obviously run down and gradually got less and less. So hopefully we'll be able to get that off. Let's carry on. There we go, that's the under seat, all clean and tidy. Now I know it probably won't bother most people, but you know, if you know me and you know my videos, I like things to be the best they can be and the clean as they can be. So that's the under seat done. Now I need to sort out the one I'm sitting on, which is this one here, get all that out of that edge. Not quite sure I'm gonna do that yet. There is a little bit on the actual material of the seat as well, but I've done a wrong bit, I get that off, but I'll just do the best I can, but you don't actually see this bit, so it's not so bad. I know you don't see that bit either, but it was bugging me that it was there, so I'll do my best with this bit and uh, then we'll get the back of the seat put back in and call that good. Lovely jubbly. There we go, that's as best as I can get that. I've had to pop the bottom bead of the seat cover out just to obviously get all the paint out from inside that groove. Unfortunately, the bit that I can't get off the most is on the front. That is the best I can get the front. It's not too horrendous, but it's just got a little bit of a white mark there. It may wear off over time, but that should be fine. It looks a lot neater. So I'm gonna get that bolted back in there and then we can get the seat base back in and carry on from where we started before. <laughs> Let's crack on. There we go, all back together. Lovely jubbly. Now we've got to concentrate on the front. This needs a good hoover out and it's a bit of a mess. <laughs> Let's carry on. Radio, next job on the Fiesta is to sort out these scabby bits on the seal. Now last year I did actually repair that whole corner there and put a new piece of arch in it, an inner arch in it and all sorts. So that bit was done last year now obviously it's not going to be show winner it was just to get it through the mot and as tidy as it could be um but i didn't do anything about these scabs so i just need to buzz these scabs back 
maybe we'll give the uh, seal a bit of a coat of stone chip to give it a bit more protection maybe and uh, obviously get it painted in blue again to make it look half decent that is the plan so I'll come back to you once I've got these buzz back and we'll see what we're working with Radio, as you can see there now, I've got those rust scabs buzzed back. Now I'm not going crazy on this, I'm just going to give them a, a good clean up, which I've already done really with the DA. As you can see, I've DA the whole seal now just to give it a key. I'm going to give these some rust treatment, these three areas, and then we're going to stone chip the entire seal up to this edge, and then I need to paint it blue again after just to make it look so it's the right colour. Um, need to go and get some more paint for that actually but obviously uh, we can get the stone chip on and get that drying. So the next job is to get it all panel wiped down, get some rust treatment on these, and then we can get some stone chip on. Let's carry on. Right then, that is all masked up as you can see. The, uh, what's it called? Anti-cure rust, whatever it is, I don't know. I can't remember, neutral rust, that's it. Has now gone off as well. That is self-priming, that stuff, so we're just gonna go straight over it with a stone chip. Remember, this car is bruised and battered, so we're not going for a show car here. This is just to keep it looking half tidy and keep it on the road. So, it's all solid, it's just scabby. So I'm gonna make it look, hopefully, a bit better with some stone chip, and then we'll paint it blue again after. Let's carry on. There we go, that is now completely lacquered all the way along as well as three coats of blue and a coat of lacquer. Now as I said I'm not going too mad with this because this actually is probably the best bit of paintwork on the whole car now. So <laughs> just shows you the quality of the rest of the paintwork if my paintwork's the best bit. So there you go, that is nice and tidy now. You can just about see the scabs under there, but like I say scabs, the bits to where I've rubbed them back and put rust stuff on them. But it's nice and tidy, that's the main thing. And I did a lot of welding on this corner, as I said last year, so it shouldn't need any welding for this MOT. Um, it isn't actually due yet, the MOT, but I'm gonna re-MOT it so that when whoever buys it, it's got a fresh uh, year's ticket on it to, to obviously use it. That'd be jubbly. Now we've got to do it all again on the other side. <laughs> right, we're around the passenger side now, as you can see. 
and it's more of the same now as I had a repair again on this side I did this last year didn't actually paint that bit blue just did it in stone chip so obviously we're gonna buzz that back give that a nice coat of blue we're gonna buzz that scab back there clean all that up give it some treatment <laughs> same with that little one there and same with that one there which I have done previously but didn't give it any treatment last time because I didn't have neutral rust at the time so I'm gonna go over those clean them all up with the DA get them all treated and then we can look at getting the seal stone chipped again the same as the other side and then obviously painted blue again and it should look fairly tidy with any luck let's carry on right there we go this side is all rubbed down and the blisters have all been treated with neutral rust as you can probably hear from that inside the car my daughter is hoovering wave <laughs> she's hoovering the car for me um, so now we are all masked up ready to get the stone chip on there so that is going to be the next step let's carry on There we go, that is the second side seal complete. It's lacquered as well. Been drying in the sun for a little while, so that is all good. But that looks pretty smart to be fair. All nice and shiny all the way under. And you would have seen in the previous clip, my daughter Lucy has done a fabulous job hoovering out the interior. So now we are gonna get the uh, front seats fitted back in. And then we should be onto the final stage, which is of course, cleaning up all this mess that's on the outside of the body from the old Sahara so let's crack on and get these seats in and then we can start cleaning There we go, seats back in. They are looking so much better. They're not perfect, they're never gonna be, but they are nice and clean at least now, and dry as well. This sunny weather done me a big favor getting these dry, so that's great. So the gear knob's still out there at the moment. I'm just gluing that, because the uh, numbers have come off the top of it, so I'm gluing that back together at the moment. So now we can get it back in the middle of the drive, because it's a bit on one side at the moment, and start getting it washed. Let's carry on.
right then, that is going to be it for this episode of Mech Tech. As you can see, the Fiesta is now like glass. It's polished up really well. Well chuffed with it. Kind of sad to see this one go, to be honest with you. This is an old car done so well over the years. It is literally an indestructible Fiesta. Maybe down to me a little bit on that, but I just won't let it die. So <laughs> it is going to be going to a new owner. Um, my sister-in-law's finished with it now and she has got a newer car. So it is on to the next owner and hopefully someone will look after it and cherish it like she and me have. I have. <laughs> me have, I have. So yeah, it's just a little one episode on this Fiesta. It is, it's got a fresh MOT on it now as well. So it is good for another year for someone to use. Um, it's got four new tires on it, new exhaust, all sorts of different things that it's been done in, within the last year. So it is a really good little car for someone just to buzz about in and uh, a run around sort of thing, you know. Now remember, I've got Instagram, mech underscore tech, 1985, for little sneak peeks during the week of what I'm up to. And I have got Facebook, mech dash tech. Um, and obviously, if you like what you see and you want to see more projects of what's going on, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button down there and get and making the little bell icon up here so that you get told whenever I upload a video. And all that is left for me to say is if you want to join me soon for more automotive adventures, I'll see you again next time. Cheers, guys.